Hey guys, welcome to Go here and welcome back to another Roblox Google scripting video. So today, this one actually took a while because it's also my comfort zone in scripting. Um, it's, this one is it's not more, it's more of like understanding um, Roblox's ropes and wheels and all that stuff rather than actual um, scripting, but it involves scripting. But anyways, so this is a simple phishing rod system. So let me just show you how it works. But first, once you get the model, let me just change it into said go fishing. Alright, so what you do is you're gonna get the rod, put in a starter pack, or for your game, you're gonna just give the rod to somebody when you buy it or whatever you want. Put the fishing main and service group service, fishing remote event, and uh, have a good storage. The map, just put it here. You can ungroup it if you want. Because the only important thing here is water. Um, and say go fishing will be in star GY. Alright, so let's just do a quick play test. So how it works is you cast a rod and it'll give you money. A random amount of money and a random amount and you get a random fish. Well, just to space it in a way. Uh, so you get your fishing rod, so I just made it basic. <laughs> oh, I forgot to hide the handle. Alright, so anyways, so you just get the fishing rod and you're gonna do you're gonna cast into the water, wait for three seconds, and it'll check cod thirty-nine. And it'll say caught something. However, if you were to cast it, touch the water, oh, never mind, it's on the water, but if you were to cast it like somewhere else but the water, it'll just come back to you. It's like, <laughs> I tried to make it so like, yeah, when you cast something, like, you have to, like, you have to follow through to the rod. Totally not on for mistake, but anyways, um, you just, so it only works if the rod touches a part called water, lowercase w-a-t-e-r. So that's the only important part that you really need. So if it touches anything but the water, it won't do anything. But if it touches the water, hold on, just cast it. Oop. Just cast it back. Oh my gosh, is there an error? Oh, there isn't. All right. Boop. All right, there you go. Boom. And there you go. So it's really simple. You know, it's a good, it's a cool thing you can add to your game. It's a simple way to earn money. Just gonna fish and get in the water. All right, there you go. And mullet, okay. You get you get the gist of it. So like that shark, okay. Anyways, so how it works is it's a bit not complicated. It's just it's to get it gets a bit messy. The main thing here is first whatever water or wherever you want them to fish, the rod will only work in any part named water. This lowercase w a t r. So if I was to name these mountains water. The rod could work on it so make sure your water is named if you already have water in the game uh just make sure you named it you name it to water it doesn't matter if it's in a model or by or alone the script checks if it's in a model or not just make sure it's named the part itself it has to be a part and it has to be or a mesh part but it has to be named water just exactly this so we just rename it to that anyway so the fishing rod um it's really simple not really simple but first you have an auto uh, there's three values casted casting and rope rope so just you can change it to whatever you want this is how long you want this is how long your rod like the the i don't know what you call it i don't know if you mean but the, the rod like the thing that goes out the cast out the, that long wire that's how long you want it to be the bigger this is the farther it goes however if it's big you want to change the casting value to like a higher value because after one second it'll just sink so if you if you want to make it longer just changes to like two or three so you give it enough time to cast out but this the length of the thing that the rope of the wire of the fish uh this is how long uh before it dips into the water so it's air time let's say and cast it is just true or false it just checks if you're casting or not or not casting all right so this is the main script first you have to know that there is a body velocity called drown this is the thing that there's the another but there's two body velocities working in play one is when um the rod that makes it go straight this one will make it go down so you'll have that little cool in that when you're fishing you have as that cool going in the air they'll go down so all right so let me show you it so all right so this is good so it gets a bit scary at first sight but let me explain to you so first is the script that parent that activated connect function oh refer just to let you know the ball and the endpoint this is the end, like the end, the tip of the fishing rod, and this the ball, like the red ball. If you ever, if you ever went fishing, that's the thing that goes in the water. Anyways, um, there's a rod, a rope 
that connects both of them. So that's the wire itself. So just just let you know if there's a rope. But so first I'll check script that activated this when you this only activates when you left click the mouse, your mouse, while equipping the tool. So once equip click activated, it'll check if the casted value equals false, that means there's casting is not currently on, so you didn't cast yet. Change it to true, that means you casted. Change the wield in the ball. Because once is the auto wield, once when the, once you play it, it'll put a wield inside here. You don't want that to be on once you cast or the ball won't move. So you want to off immediately. So that'll make it move. Make a body velocity and make that parent the ball. Of course it'll be inside the ball. And make it relative to the look vector of the player. So it'll cast by uh, the direction the player looks, the character, not the mouse, the character. Um, so that's that. And the endpoint constraint that enable true, this just makes the rope visible. Because it's right now is enabled equals false, so you won't see the rope. But once you turn it on, you'll see the rope. So it has a cool, you see the rope getting cast out. Uh, makes the ball transparency equals zero, because the ball right now, so you don't see the ball. You don't see the ball when you just hold the fishing rod out. Once you cast it, you'll see everything. You'll see the rod, you'll see the ball, all of that. Um, wait, let's go to the print casting. So this was talking about the casting value. So after one second, it'll reverse it. So make sure if you if you were to add more length to the uh, to the fishing rod, make sure you increase that value by a little bit. All right. So body destroys. So this destroys the body velocity that makes it go in a straight line. So it'll just so it'll start sinking down. That's when the um drown the drown body velocity comes into play, which just gets it um just makes it go down. Wait one then destroy, which just makes it you know just removes itself in a way. Um, the unequip value is when you if you're holding the fishing rod and you unequip it, even cast it or not, it'll just reverse everything. It'll make everything back to the first position, so the ball invisible, the rod in invisible, um, all the body velocities that if there's any invisible, the wheel goes back to true, and just it makes the ball go back to the position, its main position. Um, the other thing is the ball itself. So it just looks scary at first, but this is just it's a lot of you you okay. It's real simple. So if the ball touches the water, this first is lock equals false. So I'll just check if it's touching the water, this is all line four. I'll check if it's uh if the, if the part it touches is called water. And just in case it'll also check if if it has a parent that's a model or not. That's why I said it doesn't really matter if you put the water inside a model or not, just to make sure you see your name to water. I right, was through weight the math random. So this is the wait times. So this like um like when you fish something, you don't want it to instantly give you the fish and the money. You want what you want it to wait a certain rent random amount of time for the, so you let the players wait. So you can just change that to either like three or six, seven to ten. This is like how long they have to wait. It's random randomized. So that's like so it just makes it more fun. Uh rather than casting it out then you immediately get the fish or the money, just like when you get the water. So if hit then, so that means um this is what I was talking about. If you cast out and you drag the fishing rod, um if it's not in the water, if this timer runs out and if it doesn't touch the water anymore, it'll do the else statement, which just says rod no longer in water, it just reverses everything, like I said. Uh make everything go back to the first position. Um same thing here, everything go back to the first position if it's in the water. However, the only difference is this one fires to the client. Which gives you the fish and the money. So this whole thing is the same. If it touches something other than water, reverse back to the first position, the original, like the original position, the ball, the transparency, the endpoint. It makes the rod invisible, a rod, the rope invisible. That's just all it is. It just makes everything goes back to the first position. The only main thing here is if there, if if the rod, if the rod, uh, cast cast it out is touching the water still. When this timer runs out, it'll just fire to the client. This, this exact, this the whole script. This, that's the entire gist of the whole script. It just reverses everything back. Um, so once fired, so if, let's say you caught something, it'll fire to the player. Okay, in one event. So here it's just a most simple frame. So this you can just add random stuff here. You can add like um, Nemo or. I don't any type of that's not really fish. You can just like clown fish, there you go. But you can put any type of fish you want in the table. It'll pick a random one and just change that text table to that fish. It's like a random fish they got and it'll give them a random amount of money. 
and I'll just fire back to the server out of the amount of money that that, that was chosen. And of course, it's gonna get called into the server, give the amount of um, how much that fish was in value, the value of that fish, it will pass that to the cash player. And you can remove this as a simple theater sets. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's nothing really complicated. It's all like you just need to understand how our rope works and I guess body velocities and all that stuff. Other than that, it's you know you can just add it to your game in your own simple fishing system. And just you know just fish. It's, it's not that hard. You're just gonna go. Ooh. Oh, where did that go? My girl. Okay, let me just fish a better one. You see, I was like rolling. <laughs> Uh, it's so called like that. So it's really simple. This um, I think that yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Just make sure you change the um, uh, the leader phone. Let's change it. So find first, find first child, un. Just put currency. Find first child, find first child currency. All right, you got that. And of course, local currency equals just changes to whatever your game currency is. So just change it, the thing to it. it can be money, cash, gold coins, change that. And yeah, that's it. That's how the simple fishing rod works. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out this video that pops up right after this video. It's my game intro. <laughs> I don't know, it's pretty funny. It's a quick one. Um, but just go check that one out. And yeah, I'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.